Lesser Light by Matthew Draper. Chapter 4 24th December, Christmas Eve. Being squashed between shoppers in an aisle of TK Maxx, arms piled high with hangers of shirts in every colour and jumpers of every description and being pressed towards the changing rooms by your best friend on God's green earth at lunchtime on Christmas Eve is not the thing, let me tell you. Dylan had dragged me from shop to shop since we had parked up opposite the train station in Macclesfield, from where he would later catch a short ride to his girlfriend's place for Christmas. We ascended Macclesfield's ancient stone 108 steps from the station to the town at a pace, and he had been prodding me to pick a present ever since. There's nothing I need, I insisted as Dylan threw another shirt across my shoulders, this one dark blue and patterned with embroidered cherries. Wire hanger hooks poked at my body from all directions under the pile. It's not about needing. What do you want? We squeezed through lines of bored partners waiting outside the changing rooms and disappeared into one of the cubicles together. Belts, jeans, even a hat had come on in with us. Dylan divided the spoils, pulling off his coat and t-shirt to try new things on. His smooth skin flashed, and I felt a glimmer of heat, remembering the crush I had on him back at St Michael's. While he was dating other people, I was dreaming of our future together. A dream of carrying the cosmic fire and electricity of the spirit to communities all over the UK, while sharing an electricity of our own. Try these, he handed me filler-branded tracksuit trousers, and an oversized G-Star Raw hoodie. Comfy, no? I was swimming in the soft material. I, I don't know if it's... Swap for these! He stepped out of grey jeans and handed them to me, along with a red check cotton shirt and an orange knitted jumper. Facing the mirror, I loved the combination of the popped collar and the thick stitched orange wool. I really looked like myself. Instantly, I wanted to take it off. Dylan caught my eye in the mirror, his head plopping free of a Jack Jones sweatshirt. As if sensing my thoughts, he interjected, You are allowed to look good, you know, to feel good. I was not sure. Any moment in which I felt most alive, most myself, most in touch with my humanity, I wanted to cringe myself into non-existence. Mate, you don't think you deserve anything because we were taught that our bodies are not worth anything. You remember what Morgan used to say, if you love something, give it up. They told us to turn off our favourite music, to donate our best jumpers, and to only keep enough cash to make it through the week, if that. He broke into an impression of our mentor. Whoever has two coats, give one away and make it the good one. Dylan's face was full of kindness, but his eyes darted furiously angry at the teaching we had been fed week after week at St Michael's. Remember when you came to morning prayers with new trainers? They were comfy, slick, and you had saved up for them. Morgan called you to the front of the room and told everyone you were an example of someone making their body an idol. I had been quick to leap to my feet when Morgan called me forward, always excited to be involved in an illustration or to answer questions when called upon at morning prayers or small group. Morgan had asked me to the front of the room, indicated for me to step up onto a chair. I wondered if I was going to be asked to give the blessing, to hold my hands wide above the group and rain down glory over them. Instead, Morgan grabbed my feet, breaking into the popular social media phrase, What are those? Embarrassment flooded up my body from feet to face. In the kingdom of heaven, we do not prioritise style or comfort for our feet. We prioritise stepping in time with the spirit. Be aware of the cost of living for yourself, of living for your body, of living in comfortable shoes. They say you have to walk a mile in someone else's shoes before you can understand them. I say you need to walk someone to God who is the only one who can understand them. 
You cannot understand your needs in this world, but you will receive everything you need in the world to come. Dylan continued speaking, interrupting my memories as he gathered all the clothing together in our changing room. You were told to not make your body an idol, to empty yourself of every desire, and to be filled with G from the soles of your feet to the top of your head, but life isn't like that. You deserve good things, for yourself, for now, for this moment, for this life. Look at you, confident, stylish, and fit as anything. Your body deserves to be cared for. You deserve to be cared for. Realising he had begun to preach, Dylan switched to a crowing voice, and he declared loudly for everyone in the changing rooms to hear, It's Christmas Eve, and you deserve love! At the cashier desk, Dylan insisted the shop assistant wrap up my clothes with colourful tissue paper before placing them into the bag. He settled the bill with his credit card and handed me the handles of the bag victorious. Merry Christmas, my friend! Pulling me into a hug, smack dab in the middle of everyone else hurrying through their last minute Christmas Eve purchases. Lesser Light is an online event. Head to lesserlight.blog to join in the comment section or share this story on Facebook, Twitter, Hive or your favourite social media platform. The Lesser Light paperback is available from lulu.com or other booksellers or you can download the ebook now. But remember, no spoilers until New Year's Day. The story is fictional, but if the elements about trauma, cults or recovery have affected you, you can find helplines at lesserlight.blog.